بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم so network devices by default generate the log messages and these log messages can be used to keep the track of the events or the changes occurring in your network like if we take an example if i go to the command line so whenever you make any changes currently um i'm into my console screen of my device so this is my console screen let's say and on this console screen so whenever you make any changes let's say i'm trying to shut down one of the interface by default it is in upstate so whenever you shut down the interface immediately you will see some messages appears here now this is like indication that the this particular port s1 by 1 has been in shutdown state during this date time these options and whenever i make the interface up again the interface comes back again and you see some messages here so like that you will see different types of messages in general on on the console screen by default now these messages are typically referred as log messages and these log messages are automatically generated and by using these messages messages we can keep the track of the events occurring in your network like generally some of the some of the log messages which help us like device failure notifications like you got a router and one of the interface fails or goes down generates a log message or it can be some kind of other messages like you are connecting to some router and you are establishing the ehrp neighborship and the neighborship fails generates a log message or maybe you are connecting to some service provider network and you got some bgp connections and maybe the neighborship goes down it generates a log message in general or you can also use a specific log messages like you can you can do some kind of auditing where i can go to the router and configure the acl to match a specific traffic and i can tell the router to generate the log messages if if any traffic matches that particular pattern which can be used for some kind of auditing or even we can do some kind of troubleshooting also it is useful like uh, let's say let's say you you got some issue on the router maybe the neighborship goes down and maybe the neighborship is flapping or the vpn vpn is not coming up uh, something is not working according to a requirement and you just want to see what is happening in the back end so we can enable the logging for the debug messages and then we can see the back end messages what is uh, going on in the back end so there is also another another reason for generating the log messages and keeping a track of them and of course we can also use it for for forensic analysis like uh, for in, in some kind of in incident investigation so let's say uh, something occurred in your network maybe some kind of attack and you want to see some of these previous log messages which are generated on this particular device where we can trace the victim and attacker at which point it actually occurred so so we do enable some logging messages of course the device generates some log messages to, to some extent and we need to keep a track of those messages for multiple reasons so to now we got different options of logging like we got a console logging option vty local buffer and external log servers now basically console logging means whenever you log into any device like in this case i'm connecting to router 1 via console cable of course i am using jns3 to connect but the default uh, when you open up the console it's it's almost like a console connection here like you connect your router to physical console port and you access the router via console port and by default uh, logging is enabled on this particular port and whatever the changes happening in your network it will be by default uh, shown on the console port but by default these messages are not saved in general so the console logging is by default enabled in all your router switches and by default they send the log messages to the console port as i discussed just now and hence only the users who are physically connecting to the router console port can view these messages so if i'm if i'm use, not using the console i cannot see these messages so currently here uh, the console access is on the router 1 now by default these messages are not saved like even if you if you try to enable some kind of debug messages in the back end you also see some kind of debug messages 
where the hello messages are sent for every five seconds. So the, those messages also will be will be shown if you enable the debug debug messages by using debug EHRP packets. Now practically in the production networks, it's recommended to disable the console logging because you know large amount of logging messages or the outputs actually while we are using the debug process it's going to send to the console so the the large amount of log messages sent to the console by using some debugs it will increase the unnecessary cpu load on the routers and it can make your uh, it it will it can actually impact the control plane also sometimes because it will even it can even stop the routers from say, forwarding the packets or setting up the control plane or maybe it, it loses some kind of neighborship issues may come if the router is receiving too many log messages. So that's the reason it's it's recommended to disable the console logging because uh, mostly in the production networks console is something we don't use much because most of the time we access the device via telnet or SSH via remote device and we use only console uh, for if there are any any major issues like you are you are doing some kind of uh, password reverting or uh, if you are unable to log into the to the VTV line then you may need to troubleshoot uh, maybe some issue with the connectivity and other things so most of the time we don't use console so it's recommended to disable the console messages by using no login console so I can simply say no login console which is by default enabled so once I disable this console if I try to make some changes on the network let's say my interface goes down and you can see I don't see any any log log messages displayed here now the other option of the console is we can use something called buffer logging now, in the case of buffer logging we whatever the log messages generated and these messages we can tell the router to save them in the local buffer memory or the local RAM so this type of logging actually uses the router RAM for storing those log messages temporarily and we can we can define the buffer size uh, the amount of bytes actually how, how, much, how many bytes it should use to store those log messages so buffer is nothing but the fixed size which we are going to allocate to generate the log messages and the router is going to delete the old messages once it reaches the maximum maximum size and let's say the router is receiving the log messages anything above above this memory what we allocated automatically it will start removing the older entries now buffer logging is by default not enabled we can enable by using a command called logging buffer and if you want to verify the log messages we can use something like show logging option so let me just quickly enable this buffer logging here so in the previous I disabled the console logging so I'll try to re-enable the console logging because uh, at this point of time I want to see the log messages here so we'll say logging buffer and we can uh, define what is the buffer size you, you want to allocate let's say I'm using just 4, 4, 4096 bytes and if you want to verify I can try generating some uh, some messages like I'll try to shut down the interface and then I'll, I'll say no shutdown and also I'll try to shut down one more interface let's say s1 by 0 because on the router 1 s1 by 0 interface I'm connecting to router 2 and I have pre-configured EHRP here so most likely if I shut down the s1 by 0 interface I should also see the interface goes down here I think I didn't configure the EHRP so so I don't have EHRP configured I just I don't have here so probably you see the messages here interface change set to down I'll make it back up and then now if you want to verify these log messages we can use an option of show logging so when I say show logging you can see these messages just now whatever generated just now and the logging buffer size is 4096 bytes here 